Uh, this is a quick demonstration of some upcoming features in uh, DroneCan and in particular in the DroneCan GUI tool and in the Pi DroneCan API and lower layers. So what I've got here is the usual startup window for um, the DroneCan GUI tool. And there's a couple of little differences that uh, will have appeared here um, compared to the, the current released version. First of all, you notice that there's a Mavcan 14550. Um, that allows you to um, do CAN over Mavlink. And this means you can manipulate CAN devices remotely um, uh, across the internet. So that can be either over TCP or UDP. And it encapsulates CAN frames in the Mavlink 2 protocol. These serial devices here uh, can either be Mavlink devices or they can be SL CAN. So the existing method of doing uh, CAN interfaces into autopilots was using a, a protocol called SL CAN for serial line CAN. And if we select one of these, um, then uh, what it will do is it will check whether that interface is sending Mavlink packets. If it's sending Mavlink packets, it will choose MavCAN. Otherwise, it'll choose SL CAN. So uh, now up here, I've got MavProxy connected. You can see the device here. I am connected to a Cube Orange uh, sitting on my desk. So I'm connected via USB to that Cube Orange. And, but I'm also outputting, uh, if I output, then show that I'm outputting to UDP 14550. So I'm forwarding Mavlink from this, the USB port out over UDP. So that allows me to go and select this Mavcan 14550 and connect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the um, CAN over Mavlink allowing me to access to my CAN devices uh, via the Mavlink. So if we now have a look in the status of um, of MavProxy, you can see that a whole lot of CAN frames are being sent. And this is what the CAN frames look like. They have a, they're targeted to a particular system and component ID. They have a particular bus, so you can select what bus you want to um, listen on. They have a length, they have a CAN identifier, and then they have up to eight bytes of data. And uh, we'll also add support for FD CAN with 64 byte frames in the future. So uh, we see all those CAN frames there, and that's what is allowing the CAN GUI tool to uh, access these CAN devices over Mavlink over UDP. So I'm now going to access this uh, Freefly RTK GPS, and I can go and fetch all the parameters from that device, just like I can with SL CAN, except it's going over Mavlink this time. So um, now while I'm here, I'll show you a couple of extra features. You may notice that there is now a save to file and load to file from file button. So we can now save these parameters and um, save those on, as a file. And if we go and change one of these parameters, for example, I'm gonna change the GPS position to 50 centimeters to the front, all right. And so that's now at 50 centimeters to the front. And so if I fetch all, it'll still say that on the GPS. And I'm going to now load from file, which was the value from before I set that to 50, like that. And you'll notice the position has gone back to zero. So this allows us to save all our CAN parameters to a file and load them back from a file, which is very handy. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate updating a firmware. So what I'm going to do is update a firmware on a CAN device across CAN over Mavlink over UDP, uh, which means this the device can be anywhere in the world that I've got internet access where I can forward Mavlink, and uh, it allows me to then in, um, update the firmware. Now, an addition in here is we can update binary images, bin files. We can now also use uh, APJ or PX4 files. So under, if we choose IDUPILOT firmware, it's now listing APJ files, which allows us to use our 
normal universal file format for firmware. And um, we can do that with, um, uh, with the GUI tool without having to convert it to a bin file first. All right, so I'm gonna select this Freefly RTK APJ file, and I'm going to update this firmware over CAN over Mavlink. So there it goes, and it's gonna start updating. And you can see the usual thing. So uh, uh, the Arduparlet CAN bootloader in this vendor specific code puts how many kilobytes it has um, sent over the link so far. So we actually will see here, we've got a lot of CAN frames flowing backwards and forwards. And I can go and have a look with the bus monitor and show what traffic. And we've got a lot of traffic going on here. Uh, so if I just stop that, you can see all the file reads going backwards and forwards for transferring the firmware. And of course we get all the other traffic. So we can do the bus monitor over CAN, over Mavlink, over UDP as well. All right, so that's nearly finished updating. And uh, one thing to note is the file names, if I manage to catch that before it finishes. So the file names that are being used here, um, in the previous version of uh, the CAN GUI tool, the file name being used here was just the relative file name within the directory. And that had two problems. First of all, it may not be unique. You might have uploaded an apprefbin from a different directory and you could end up with the wrong firmware being sent to your device. The second problem was that long names could cause timeouts and errors updating. So you had to always use a short file name. If you used a very long file name, it could fail because a single packet loss would cause this protocol to fail. So now we use a base64 encoded version of the um, CRC32 of the whole file name, which makes it much less likely that we get a problem. And it means we can transfer using very long file names. All right, so that's now operational. So I'll just demonstrate that with long file names. So I'm gonna go for um, Arduparlet firmware. And here's a very long file name. If you tried with a long file name like this with the previous version of the DroneCAN GUI tool or the UAV CAN GUI tool, it very likely would have failed. But with this new system, um, it doesn't fail and we can quite happily update that firmware. Um, and that's updating fine. All right, so that gives you an idea about some of the new upcoming features of um, the DroneCan GUI tool and the Pi DroneCan um, implementation. Uh, you can, of course, use this in other applications, and I'm hoping that other ground stations will implement the CAN frame, um, CAN over Mavlink protocol. Um, it should make life a lot easier for users. They don't need to remember to set up their serial ports as SL CAN, and it means that on F4 boards that have a single CAN interface, uh, they don't need to um, uh, change the reboot and change the, uh, the type of the, their main Mavlink interface. And they can retain Mavlink situational awareness while updating firmware. Plus, if they've got a fast link uh, for Mavlink, then you can do things like update firmware and change parameters remotely. So for example, if you've got a Wi-Fi Mavlink connection to your uh, vehicle, then you could uh, change parameters on any of your CAN devices or update the firmware remotely over that Wi-Fi link using the CAN GUI tool or in the future using Mission Planner. That's it for today. So I uh, hope you enjoyed these new features of uh, DroneCAN.